The waters that run along the California coast are some of the most abundant and thriving nearshore ocean waters in the world. To protect these waters, the Marine Life Protection Act was passed by the California State Legislature in 1999. The Act mandates that a network of marine reserves be established to conserve biological diversity and the health of the marine ecosystem. The goals of the Act are to protect natural diversity and ecosystem functions, sustain and restore marine life populations, improve recreational, educational and study opportunities, protect representative and unique habitats, clear objectives, effective management, adequate enforcement and sound science, and ensure that MPAs are designed and managed as a network. One of the challenges in reaching these goals is the management of sea urchins in marine reserves. Sea urchin populations in marine reserves, when left unmanaged, will overgraze kelp beds and dominate the marine ecosystem. Scientists, academics, NGOs, fishermen, and the California Department of Fish and Game are all aware that sea urchins are recognized as a nuisance species when allowed to overpopulate and create sea urchin barrens. What do you have in a sea urchin barrens? an area where sea urchins so carpet the seafloor that no algae can grow and biodiversity is tremendously reduced when compared to areas that are more balanced. In essence, you have a desert in terms of biodiversity, of luxuriousness of habitat, diversity of critters and creatures throughout the seafloor, preventing the restoration of that uh, ecosystem. Once they've remove the kelp, then they can just kind of spread out and dominate the area and anything that starts, any little recruitment of kelp or anything that, that uh, comes about, they immediately can, can gray, overgraze it and keep that domination going. You get a tremendous amount of sea urchin recruitment in the barren areas. So once you have a barren area, it stays there. How do reserves interact with the urchin kelp uh, interactions? And in most areas, especially in uh, Channel Islands, it'd be negatively. If you don't control those sea urchins, you're going to have barrens, and the barrens are going to be not only just barren stationary, but they're going to expand. On June 24, 2009, a team of Crane Protocol certified divers visited the state marine reserves at San Miguel and Anacapa Islands Peace Co. and Channel Islands National Park kelp forest monitoring sites. The purpose of these dives were to observe the sea urchin populations in kelp forest habitat. It's June 24, 2009. We're at the uh, Hare Rock uh, in, just outside of Kyler Harbor, San Miguel Island. We're in the Harris Point State Marine Reserve. What I intend to do at this site is, um, is go down and survey the Kelp Forest Monitoring Peace Coast site, which is located between Hare Rock and, and the island right here. I'm gonna do a survey and lay out a transect, put a quadrant down, and get a general feel for the amount of sea urchins uh, that are located in the area and whether or not it may be considered a barrens, urchin barrens, or an urchin dominated area. Using the crane protocol, the diver documented 22 red sea urchins in a quadrat at the 13 meter mark. Over 10 sea urchins within a single quadrat constitutes a sea urchin barren. Under further observations, the divers did a visual survey to document the scope and size of the urchin barren inside the marine reserve. What struck me was just uh, urchins spread out everywhere all over the rocks. Uh, no food, no kelp, no algae growth. Uh, I, I think I saw one sheephead uh, and some very small pictopodiums, the sun stars. It's really clear. All you have to do is swim outside this kelp right here and you've got waves of sea urchins that are starving coming in. So there's very few fish, very few uh, sessile organisms living. There's no mac macroalgae. It's, it's just a, a very unproductive area for sea life. The divers then traveled to the Anacapa Island Marine Reserve at the Landing Cove Peace Co. Kelp Forest Monitoring Site, the control site for the 2004 Lafferty paper on trophic cascades and sea urchins in marine reserves. The goal of the dive was to compare the two reserves. The divers observed that the Anacapa Reserve Site is in a different biogeographic region and has different topography compared to other reserve sites at the Channel Islands. And this site here is really different from Miguel in that uh, you have a wall that goes down to some rubble rock and then the rubble rock then goes to sand. 
There really is no reef habitat that extends out any distance. The site here is really not comparable to San Miguel, and I really question the validity of the Lafferty paper in other marine reserves that are outside of this bioregion. Anacapa is just a tiny little island with a, a, a really a fairly small kelp bed, and uh, in, in no way would I consider that representative of the massive kelp beds that occur at, at many of the other islands and along the coast. In the 1960s and the 1970s, recognizing the damage of sea urchin overpopulation, the California Department of Fish and Game permitted the use of quicklime and hammering in an attempt to control the population of sea urchins along the California coast. Today, academia, NGOs, and government organizations, including the University of California, Santa Barbara, NOAA, Santa Monica Bay Keepers, and the Orange County Coast Keepers, are either aware of or actively involved in removing sea urchins from barrens in order to restore kelp bed ecosystems. Scientists have acknowledged the benefits of such removal, including the 2001 Karpov Tagna paper commissioned by the California Department of Fish and Game. The report states that the red sea urchin fishery has a positive effect on kelp beds. As a solution to the challenge of the development and spread of sea urchin barrens in marine reserves, adaptive management and controlled harvesting of sea urchins is a tool that will have positive benefits for the marine ecosystem and the waters off the California coast. Between a state reserve where no take could take place and a conservation area where some limited take could take place or some managed take, uh, I, I would certainly agree with a conservation area. I think this is a good example of adaptive management and it should be used. Adoption of an area as a marine conservation area can have three big benefits. Number one, in the spirit of the Marine Life Protection Act, you'll do a faster job on restoring ecological diversity in the marine environment. Number two, you'll have fewer regulatory cycles that you need to go through and that leads to number three, you're going to save taxpayers money by having fewer regulatory actions to process. Adaptive management and consideration of sea urchin overpopulation in marine reserves is necessary for the responsible management and the realization of the goals set forth by the Marine Life Protection Act.